What is the timeline of buying a house? How long does it take to close on a house after your offer has been accepted? If you're ready, we'll get right into this right now. I'm Angie Blanco, a realtor here in Miami, Florida with One Path Realty, and you are wondering how long it takes to buy a house. What is the timeline and what you should expect? Well, we're gonna go step by step through the home buying process, and by the end of this video, you should have a pretty clear idea of how the process goes. I also have a free downloadable guide of the step by step home buying process that I'll link down in the description. Feel free to get it, print it out, and write all over it if it helps. So let's get right into this. There is a general timeline for buying a house, which is typically between 30 to 60 days from start to closing. But of course, everyone's situation is a little bit different from the time they need to get prepared to the time they need to shop around for and then any surprises that may show up along the way. So we'll go a little general, we'll go a little broad just to give you the typical timeline. Step one is getting pre-approved. This is the first thing you should do because without it, you don't really know what properties you should be looking looking at because you just don't know what you qualify for. You could be looking at homes totally out of your price range because you assume you can afford them, but in reality, you might only qualify for half of what they cost. Yeah, ouch. So in getting your pre-approval, a mortgage lender or a broker will look over a few of your documents in order to see how much you qualify for. And this can take them anywhere between two to five days to get an accurate pre-approval. And I emphasize accurate because some lenders will tell you on the spot or on a simple phone call that you qualify for X amount. And this is really fishy. It's a red flag because there's almost always something that comes up later on that somebody wasn't aware of because they didn't really do the digging or enough digging up front. So to be as efficient as possible, right from the start, they should be really crunching your numbers, checking your credit score, your debts, and this can take them a couple of days. The documents they'll typically need to see from you are bank statements, tax returns, they'll need to pull your credit, yes, a hard inquiry. They'll need to check your debts in comparison to your income and this will allow them to determine accurately, emphasized again, how much you qualify for and what type of loan you qualify for. Now, I do wanna give you guys an example of something really important that a lot of new home buyers miss or they don't pay attention to and that is knowing exactly how much you can comfortably pay each and every month for a mortgage payment regardless of how much you can qualify for for the home loan because it could be that you qualify for a super high loan amount but that monthly mortgage payment might be just too high for you combined with all your other living expenses or maybe you're able to pay it but you just don't want to you want a lower monthly payment and that's totally fine but knowing this number of how much you're comfortably able to pay each and every month will help you so much in buying a place that you can comfortably afford and you know enjoy your life in and enjoy this home purchase. And as you've probably guessed by now, the financing of a deal is really important. It's really the backbone of a transaction. If we don't have a highly capable lender working with us, it could be that the deal falls apart at the last minute for whatever reason. And I think I can safely say that we both do not want that. And how to make sure that doesn't happen to you, you might be thinking. Well, if you have a trusted realtor, they most likely have a recommended lender that they've worked with in the past that they can refer you to. But if you don't have a trusted realtor just yet, then you can go online, check reviews, and see who resonates with you most and who you think is the most qualified. Step number two, the second thing you're gonna wanna do is hire a realtor. Now, this is almost interchangeable with step one because having an experienced and reliable realtor is just as important as having an experienced and reliable lender. So if you prefer, you can hire a realtor first and then start the pre-approval process with their recommended or preferred lender. If you already know of a realtor who you'd like to work with, that's great. But if not, finding one in your local market, I'd say could take about three days. Again, just finding somebody who has great reviews and who you can easily connect with, communicate with, and just talk to. Without either party though, realtor or lender, you and the house you love will be in jeopardy since you won't have the right representation or just sufficient representation. 
Moving on to step three, this is the fun part. Now you get to go shopping. Now, there really isn't any set time frame for finding a house. Some people find it within a week, some people find it within a month, and others take a lot longer for whatever reason. If, for example, there just aren't very many homes available at that time with their criteria, or if they're just being picky. With your pre-approval though, we'll know exactly the type of homes that we can be looking at as far as price range goes and the type of property. For example, if you you have an FHA loan, it's very likely that we will not qualify for a condo type property just because of the FHA guidelines. But if you had a conventional loan, it's very likely that we do. So again, depending on your pre-approval, we can modify our search criteria to really focus only on properties that fit our criteria. And if you and your realtor are really honing in on these types of properties that actually match, then I'd say a safe searching window would be anywhere between two and five weeks, depending again on available inventory and also if you're just liking anything that you're seeing. So once we've found the house we love, we move to step four, which is making the offer. Now in our current Miami market, which is literally as hot as a freaking volcano with sprinkles on top, an offer should be made within minutes, like immediately after seeing the property. If you wait hours, it's risky and days, you could almost forget about it. It's probably already under contract. When I'm with a client and they want to make an offer on a property we just saw, you better believe I am in my car, on my laptop, connected to my phone's internet hotspot, and I'm preparing the offer for signing. But that's just me. And in a normal market where sellers are receiving maybe one offer on their property, there can typically be some back and forth with negotiating the price or terms like how long the inspection will be or how much earnest money is deposited. But in this market where sellers are receiving multiple offers, there really isn't a lot of negotiations happening before an offer is accepted. They're typically just choosing the highest and best offer right from the start. And even though this is the case and the market is really this hot, some buyers still want to offer lower than asking price, which is okay, it's fine but it'll likely not be accepted because of the amount of competition. But I always say that it is still worth a shot because sometimes those really high offers fall through and cancel and at that point, we may have a second chance because of you know the professional way that we presented our offer that may be stuck out to the listing agent or to the seller. And price is usually the most important thing to a seller nowadays just because the market is so crazy and they're trying to take advantage of it and make top dollar. But if those super high offers aren't even closing, then they're gonna have to look elsewhere. Step number five, we have an offer accepted and we go under contract. At this point, we open escrow, which means we deposit our earnest money to our title company. Your realtor can also recommend a title company if you don't have one or if you don't know of one. And so this earnest money should be deposited within three days of going under contract. And this shows the seller that you're serious and have skin in the game. The contract will also be shared with all parties. So lender, title company, you, the sellers, the realtor, so that everyone is aware of all of the important dates, all the terms of the contracts and all of the uh, deadlines, very important. Your lender at this point will be requesting more documents from you and just more recent information from you in order to get an official loan approval for this specific property because your pre-approval was just a general approval just for the sake of knowing what we qualified for and you know knowing what we could look at. And this official loan approval can take anywhere from 20 to 30 days just depending on how quickly the bank works and how many other deals they're currently working on. Since there is a lot of movement in the market right now, I like to keep my loan approval periods at 30 days just in case, even though we typically get them by day 20 or 25 tops. Step six is inspections. So from the day you go under contract until about day seven or 10, however long you and the sellers have agreed on, is your inspection period. This is our time to really dig deep, do our due diligence and get the house inspected. If you're uncomfortable with any of the findings like AC, plumbing, anything, you can get a specialist out there in that field. And if you still had a problem with the potential issues, or if you just didn't feel comfortable with you know, moving forward for any reason, you are able to back out of the contract and get your earnest money back with no penalty. Now I am speaking for Florida, so if you're in another state, contact your local realtor or a local lender, a title company, and get that information straight from the source. Typically the most important things to look out for an inspection are the four major parts of a house. So this includes roof, 
plumbing, electrical, and the HVAC system. And during this inspection period is really our time to also negotiate any credits that we may wanna ask for concerning any issues regarding the house. It's never guaranteed that a seller will accept our request, especially now because, you know, they just have so many offers to choose from, but with a physical inspection report, that you know we can show them that backs up our request i've almost always been successful in getting my clients a credit no matter how crazy the market is moving forward this is step seven our lender will have ordered the appraisal and then the title company will also have ordered lien search title search and the survey of the property and this all happens pretty simultaneously by both departments and an appraisal is a non-biased evaluation done of this property that we're under contract on it's done by a third party who's appointed by the bank where we're getting our loan from and again they are non-biased so they don't know you they don't know the sellers they don't know anyone they are just giving this property a value depending on comparables that have sold in the area with you know similar characteristics and similar conditions and what the appraiser determines the value of that property is is how much the bank will lend you for that property so it doesn't matter if you're under contract on a home for like $500,000. If the appraisal comes back at $300,000, that is what the bank will lend you on that house because that's what they think it's worth. And in reality, the discrepancy isn't usually that much, but sometimes we'll see a 10 to $20,000 difference between the appraisal and the purchase price. And if you're in a situation like this, it's just another opportunity to negotiate with the sellers and say, you know, you're either willing to make up X amount of that difference or you're not okay with making up any of the difference. And then the sellers can either agree to reduce a portion of the price or not. And if no agreement is made, then you can cancel the contract at this point. And this is called an appraisal contingency. And right now in our Miami market, this is the most typical thing to see buyers doing, which is offering cash over the appraised value just in case the appraisal comes in short, just right off the bat in their initial offer because they know of the high amount of competition in our market. There just really aren't enough homes available. So it's become a bidding war, you know, who can outbid the rest of the potential offers. And these appraisals can usually take between three and four weeks to get back, just again, depending on how much activity in the market at the moment. Now, regarding the title company's lien and title searches and the surveys, this can also take a few weeks, usually a little longer than the appraisal, but you definitely want this because it verifies all the legal details of the property and make sure that you know, there isn't anything weird going on like open liens, unpaid taxes, outstanding mortgages. And then the survey will also verify your exact property limits and let you know of any like encroachments on your property, like your neighbor's fence being six feet into your yard. How nice, right? Time for some friendly confrontation. So after all of this from day one of officially being under contract until now, having our lien searches back from the city, we're probably at about day 35 to 40 and we are just getting ready to close before closing though you're gonna want to schedule a final walkthrough just to see the property one last time before you sign your life away just to make sure it's still in the same condition as the last time you saw it and loved it you're also going to want to make sure that you have your title company's secure wiring instructions to make your final transfer for closing and this will be the rest of your down payment whatever wasn't covered by your earnest money deposit your closing costs and any additional funds that you might have agreed to pay on top of the appraisal, if any. Closing day, finally, will typically be day 40 to 45 in a normal transaction, and this is just counting contract dates. So any time spent in preparation, like choosing a realtor or a lender, and then shopping around is additional time. And if you're thinking of moving to Miami, you can watch my previous video where I talk about if Miami is a good place to live or not. Click right over here and happy watching. I'll see you on the next one.